so I just wanted to jump in mm. on, on mm. WeChat. Mm. So, you, you know, you're, you're taking your time formulating your long-term China mm. in China yes. strategy. Yeah. But you started, what is it, one, two, three years ago yeah. by really starting to engage with yeah. with your Chinese customers on, on WeChat. We, we had a bit of a scare, um, which was kind of the push into WeChat, um, which was, it, it, it's probably one of the, the everyone knows the, the benefits of social media, but you know, I think everyone's kind of aware of the perils of social media as well. And um, I, I can't give it amazing context, um, but I can give it some, which was there was a Chinese KOL um, with several million followers on WeChat who decided to, for reasons that we don't quite understand, but it's the nature of, of social media, I think, to basically call us fake. That um, the premise of it, and again, I'm not, maybe not doing it justice, was something that every picture that everyone's ever seen online of our farm was faked. It was photoshopped. It wasn't. Didn't look like that. Um, and um, that was a pretty harsh comment because you know it's not really possible for us to control um, everybody. Surely someone would post. Now you can take terrible photos of a farm. We we can't guarantee that people are good photographers. It is possible. But mostly, um, if you visit us during Bloom, you're going to get a lovely, lovely photo. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And even I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a complete amateur at taking photos. Even I can get decent quality pictures um, using just an, an iPhone or you know, mobile phone. You're getting some quality stuff. Um, and so this was posted out there. And again, as is typical, we didn't know. Um, and fortunately... Another KOL with about as many um, followers came back and said, that's rubbish, it's lies. I've been there, and here's the photo that I took. Um, and they started having this conversation where they started slinging insults at each other. And we'd by this point been made aware and we had some people sort of saying, oh, look, this is what's happening and this is what's happening. And I felt like that, you know, one of those Godzilla movies where you have those two giant monsters fighting each other and the, the citizens looking, you know, looking up at this terrible occurrence without any power to change the outcome. And, and um, it, it was, we had no voice, we had no skin in the game. I, I, I felt like a lot of it could be diffused just by actually saying, here's a photo we took today. You know, it's raw, it's, it's unfilled, you, you guys can decide whether it's lies or not. Um, unfortunately, the argument dissipated very quickly, and that the, I, again, from what I understand, the kind of government stepped in at this point. There were a lot of conversations in in papers, like in the, in, in in the media, about why can't people get on, like why can't people be nice online. So it sort of took it away, diffused it from the whether or not Bridgestow was was what it said it was, which we are, um, to why can't everyone just get along and be nice online? And, and I think that was very early days of the kind of the whole social. Credit system, you know, again, be nice to each other, be nice to each other, which yeah. I think is a, a nice, a nice ethic. But you know, as I said, it was a, an unsolicited attack on on what we were, and we had no voice, mm. and that prompted me, to to say we've we've got to develop, we've got to be able to communicate. Online, we have to be able to say this is us, this is real, this is what we do. We're just a lavender farm. We we don't we, we present what we are. Um, if you don't believe us, come visit. And so that was the urgency if you will um, for us to get that we didn't actually have a plan at that stage but I moved very very quickly to do so um, and so you know we try and make sure that our messaging is is, is appropriate um, but also have that opportunity as I said to have a voice um, should anything like that pop up